So welcome back to another episode and welcome to Super Derek. He's come all the way up from Seattle to talk RPGs for the entire day. And I have to do a big introduction about you. You have an amazing RPG channel called Super Derek. Yes, I do. Thank yeah. you. It's, it's a channel where I talk about RPGs from my past and RPGs that I've never played before. It's, yeah, it's good. just RPGs all the time. and uh, I love it because you talk about Dragon War, you talk about Soul Blazer, all the old, great old you know action RPGs as well that we grew up with. And I invited Derek up today because I'm like, I love his channel. Definitely subscribe down below. I'll put a link to his channel. I think you'll be blown away. And I got to say, me and you are like kind of polar opposites. I am like this crazy, energetic, nutty kind of guy going nuts, and you're this super cool, super <laughs> relaxed guy, and it's like so funny that way. When I'm hanging out with you, I'm like, John, tone it down a bit. You know, <laughs> like really, for that's, sure. That's okay, I can be the straight man here. You can, you can absolutely do it. But we thought we'd talk about RPGs, and I thought we'd kind of do like an interview style thing to talk about RPGs. What got you started playing these games? Like, how old were you? What was your first game experience? <sighs> So the first RPG I ever played, most of you probably won't consider this an RPG, but yeah. uh, was Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for right. Super Nintendo. That was sort of the gateway drug here uh, because once I had finished playing the game, I went to my local game shop and I was like, I need more games like this. Right. And the game shop there was Game Guy. It was Awesome, I loved it. But where was that at? It was uh, like in Aggieville in Manhattan, Kansas. It was oh wow, a really small town. And that Game was like, guy, yeah. <laughs> I like the nice. It was, it was that. the only place that you could buy, sell, and trade games. It was like before GameStop became that ubiquitous. Right. Uh, there wasn't like an EB Games or anything there. So, uh, so I went to Game Guy. Yeah. And I'm like, I have this to trade in because when you're poor and, and stuff. That's when what you're you a kid, do. that's what you do. You just traded games in and yeah, yeah, try to get something out of it and get more games, new so, games. So the game that I got. The guy plugged it into a Super Nintendo. Let me play a few minutes of it, see if it was something I wanted. It was Earthbound. Whoa. Yeah. I, Isn't that interesting? I, that that far off? Like, so you didn't do any of the Final Fantasy threes at that time or anything like that? No, it was it was not really something that interested me too much at that time. I didn't understand them. I didn't how old were you, how though, worked. when you were playing? When were you playing Link to the Past? How old were you? Gosh. So first time I ever played Link to the Past was probably, I was probably eight. Wow. Probably eight or ten. I was 16 when that game came out. So that's showing my age. You know? Yeah. I, and it's interesting that you said it wasn't an RPG, but it was kind of your gateway thing. There was a lot of confusion back then. If Zelda was an RPG or not, it's yeah. an action RPG. The debate has gone on for years. With Breath of the Wild now, we kind of say that, yeah, Zelda is kind of a, you know, an RPG kind of thing. Now, because it had stats that you can change your character and make your yeah. character better. Zelda 2, in particular, is a very clear RPG because it actually has experience points that you gain and you uh, your level up as you go and that's I feel like the most clearly delineated uh, This is definitely an RPG in the oh, series Even I, though it's the black sheep I did an episode years ago where I was standing in a video game store and I would interview people if they thought Zelda was an RPG or not And you know a lot of people say no, it's not yes It is and the comments people were oh losing their minds it's, man. They're losing it. It's very divisive <laughs> It's very divisive and uh, and all that but I think with Breath of the Wild. Yeah, yeah I think it's a fucking RPG, you know. But it doesn't matter. So anyway, so you were going to Game Guy and you played Earthbound. You got to get to play a little bit I of that. It like five, ten minutes. So I'm like Ness. I'm like I'm walking around. This is pretty cool. This is I'm in my home. I go and I find a cracked baseball bat, and that's the coolest thing. Isn't that cool. I'm like okay. Well, I'm like walking around. I get to the meteor, and you know, Pokey's there, and you can't go all the way to the meteor yet. So you got to go back to your house. I'm like okay. This seems like probably something I'll want. And yeah. the uh, important to know about that point is up to that point. There's no fights. Yeah. There's no fighting in that game up to that point. So I'm like, oh yeah, this is totally up my alley. Cause I'm thinking- <laughs> Is this kind of a cakewalk? Is it's an exploration style game? Yeah, I'm thinking it's gonna be like Zelda. I'm gonna swing a baseball bat instead of a sword when I hit A. Yeah. And it's just gonna be exactly what I want. So Ooh. I so I trade in Link to the Past. Ooh. Plus maybe $20 to get my copy of Earthbound. Which is a steal of a deal. Well, nowadays we know, <laughs> right? But we didn't know back then. Yeah, and I especially didn't know back then because when I got home and I played it, I plugged it in. There's this magical moment where I plugged it in and I turn it on and I'm playing and I get into my first fight. I'm like, what the f what the hell is this? <laughs> oh, did, did it bother you? You're like, what is this? Like, had you done RPG combat like that? No, never. Oh, wow. So I must have been, what the fuck? Yeah. I 
hated it. Oh wow, that's so amazing! I, I was so disappointed. I I I didn't I couldn't figure it out. I was like, what what the hell is this? So I turned off my 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 game. Yeah. I throw it in the the thing underneath my TV. Yeah. Uh, and I forget about it for like a year. No, you were just done. Yeah, I was just done. You had the box still, right? I never got the box. It was used. It was oh, a so used, it was a used game. Oh, so used being that you just got the game. Yeah, just oh the game. Oh my god, right? Yeah. So there it goes underneath. What made you go back to it? Was there any RPGs in between or was it just like that was it? I think uh I think what eventually it was is I had nothing left to play except for that game. And it was about a it was like a summer break from uh from grade it was probably middle school at this point. Grade school, middle school, kind of blurry. Yeah. Around that time. And I'm like, well, I got nothing better to do. Let's figure this out, I guess. Because mm -hmm. so, back then, you really had—if you had a game, you had to really play it. Yeah. Because you didn't have anything else. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, because, ah, oh, man, like, what else did I have? I I also had a Genesis, and like, I could play like Green Dog, but <laughs> <laughs> Game Sack will love it that you said that. I <laughs> Joe's gonna love that. I, I, which I played, but I didn't love it. <laughs> no, no, nobody likes a green dog except for Joe from GameSack in his closet downstairs in a, a safe that he's got it in. But there's only so many times you can die in that game before you <sighs> need to give up. I, I'm not. I'm, I, yeah, that that game is not in my collection. It doesn't exist, and it never will be. I have Dynamite Ducks. That's what I have. He, Joe has that. You you can have Green Dog as well. Yeah. So eventually, I play it and I figure it out, and then, oh man. Like, it hit you, eh? It did. Oh, wow. The, especially, uh, I think, what sealed the game for me. Oh, my God. So this is, a, this is really interesting. I got all the way to the end. And this, is it okay if I say spoilers here? Spoilers for the ending of Earthbound, which yeah. I know. we have. I yeah. finished the game, so it's fine for me. Okay. Yeah, so, just so you know, you can skip ahead for like two minutes or something. So I couldn't figure out how to beat Gygus. Yeah. I couldn't figure it out for months. So I was like... Well, I just gotta keep getting stronger because I'm like, man, I'm doing something to guy. I guess when I'm like beating the crap out of him. Were you so still you were in the like in, in the world in the robots yeah. and you were leveling up? Yeah, I got all of my characters to level 99. All of my characters level 99, and I still couldn't beat him. And I was so frustrated, and I was like, just giving it one last go. And it was like I was. And there's no internet to check out how to do it back then. Well, I didn't have it. I mean, yeah. I well, some... might have had dial up at 14.4k modem. But I sure it's... didn't. I knew some people in the neighborhood that had it. Was, yeah. So, so I was up against the ropes with this. I was like down. People were dying. I'm like level man. 99. Like yeah, people were. It was terrible. We were yeah. all dying, and uh, so I was last ditch effort. We're like we're almost out of magic points, and I had Paula use prey. Because I was like, sometimes this helps, sometimes this kills people. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's and been then, a long time. And I probably used that out of frustration too. If not, well, I got to do something here. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then it started like showing these cutscenes from like people who were like, heard your prayers from across the universe and time. And it was an amazing and, moment, eh? It's oh really cool. God, it's a I, good ending. Is it? Oh. I got shivers. I finally figured it yeah, out. Yeah, you're actually here to prove it. I have shivers. <laughs> I, I really, that game is so... If you, I know what I loved is that you said you're playing it and you got it. That's like any RPG where you're playing it and all of a sudden there's a moment when you're like, okay, I get it. Like Kim yeah. was playing Dragon Quest Nine and she w was going in and out of town and gaining money and stuff like that. And it's just all of a sudden she's like, oh my God, I'm getting stronger. <laughs> I can go here and I can buy better equipment. It can make me do more. I get it. Yeah. It's one of those I get it moments with RPGs. So for uh -huh. anybody who doesn't play RPGs, give it a shot. If Hopefully you, you get it. You yeah. know what I mean? Once you get it you're, it, you're stuck for life, right? Oh my god. I Well, clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have an entire since. channel devoted to RPGs, which is wonderful. Spreading the spreading the good word. Have you heard about uh, our Lord and Savior <laughs> RPGs? I know. That's what I feel like, too. I just, that's what I've been doing. Ease, please. You know, over the years, uh, just trying to promote... The hobby, because you know what it is, is we've enjoyed these games so much when we were younger. We just want to, we want other people to have the same amount of fun that we had. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of like a religious -y thing. Please come, you know, come into our sanctum yeah. and, uh, you know, become part of our religion because it's fun, though. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, it's part of like the human experience is to take enjoyment in sharing these totally. experiences with people. Um, and I guess that's part of why I started my channel. Right. And you started about five years ago. I'm just about to, yeah, just like in July, five years. Yeah. So what's like, cause you know, for anybody out there, a lot of you out there uh, have YouTube channels. 
What was it like for yourself developing a, a channel, you know, about RPGs? What was going through your mind? You're like, I got this great idea. I know how to do this. Or were you like me? I was really insecure. I'm like, how the fuck do I do this? I was just, no, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I have a background in making art and I went to, I actually went to college for video game design. That's awesome. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's really it's good. terrible, but. <laughs> it was a bad course, was it? Yeah, not good? Well, it was a good course. I learned a lot, but it was just a dead end career path, I think. Right, for, right. For me, not for you. You, if, if you, you want to go do college for go, video games, do it. Please make God of War the next <laughs> one, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, where was I going with that? So I had no idea what I was doing, but I yeah. was able to like make these nice graphics. I came up with my intro. I went on to like Pond Five, and I got my theme song because I was yeah. like, I want to, I want to be a YouTuber and show everybody about all these cool things. Did you loved because you loved RPGs it, just from that love. Well, the thing is, the channel that I made initially was not about RPGs. What was it about? It was about game collecting. Oh, just game collecting. A lot of people start that way too. Yeah, it was about Sh showing off the collections and yeah. things like that. Yeah. It was about showing off games that I had in my collection and talking about the ones that I really loved in that collection. And that's why it's called The Game Collection. That's the name of the show. Yeah. But as it turned out, after like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten episodes, all I was talking about were RPGs. I'm a little guilty about that as well. Like, like I, 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 I'm guilty of talking a, a lot about JRPGs over the years. Oh, yeah. And uh, I love a lot of Western RPGs as well, but I have a lot of background. You know, like, what a lot of people don't know, and you know, is that in the 80s and 90s, it was predominantly Japanese RPGs that were out. Predominant, yeah. Unless you had a PC, you could play some of those amazing uh, Dungeons & Dragons style yeah. games and Ultima and all that kind of stuff, which I didn't have. Yeah. I, I had consoles, so I had to play Dragon Warrior. Yeah. So, yeah. like, yeah, that's that's exactly what you had to do. Because, I mean, I guess there were, like, a few Ultima games, and I guess Fazanadu made it to the Super Nintendo, but I haven't played those. But, yeah. But it, the ones that I did, the ones that got really big that hooked me in were definitely JRPGs. Oh, always. I... I remember going down and playing Fantasy Star at my friend's place, and that was like, I was talking like the summer of 88, it was like, whoa. Yeah. Like, you were blown away to see, you know, Japanese uh, anime-style graphics in a video game that was a role-playing game. It was unfathomable. And I'm going to do an entire episode where I talk about what uh, RPGs then and RPGs now, and kind of what's changed a lot. And that blew me away. But I came home, I didn't have a Master System at the time, and I was like, oh, shit, what have I got? I'm like, oh, I got an NES. I'm like, oh, Dragon Warrior's coming out. I got all excited about it, played it. It wasn't quite Fancy Star, but it was it was my RPG, and it was yeah. good, and, and all of that. So where do you go from playing Earthbound? Where do you go like next after that? Like Because you, you, you start doing the channel and all of that. Uh, how does that all go, then? Well, so, yeah, first video I ever reviewed was my favorite game of all time, Earthbound. And yes. And then I played some of the games from my youth that I really loved, like... Uh, Breath of Fire. I did like the whole Breath of Fire series. That's after that crazy, point. man. That's so you, you're so in depth with your videos, which I really appreciate. Well, thank you. A lot, yeah. Yeah. So eventually, it's like, well, I need to start also getting through some of my backlog because during this time, I was building up my collection because I thought it was the coolest thing. I yeah. needed to get some new games and may as well put them to use. So, so can I say, was your game collecting like? Were you going back and buying a lot of old, older games that you hadn't played just to play them, to be able to review them, to say, hey, this is what this game is like? Well, originally, I went back and wanted to go back and buy the games that I had emulated because... Oh, right, of course. Because during... Because once I had figured out that you could emulate these games, like sure. Super Nintendo on a relatively inexpensive computer, yeah, that was that was how I played Super Nintendo for the longest time. And and I also want to say for anybody watching, I completely support emulation. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And the reason why is that for somebody to buy some of these games, they're like four hundred dollars, and that's in, that's impossible. Yeah. So go and emulate it. Go and play it. If there's no no way you can buy it for five dollars on Steam or something, go and goddamn emulate it because there's no other option. Yeah. Why well, go buy a game that's so expensive? That's stupid. I want everybody to play Snatcher. For yeah. example, yeah. And that money's not going. Or the money that you'll get from buying from a seller, it's not going to the, to the company. You're right. They're exactly. done making their money unless they make a re-release. In which case, support it. You know, show the game companies that that's what you want to see. But so so you spent so you spent a lot of time over those years playing a lot of emulation, yeah. playing all of these old games. And you're like, what's Final Fantasy two, three, and all this? Yeah. So you played a lot of that emulation. And then you're like, 
I want to get the physical copies to mm -hmm. to do also to review it. Well, at the time, because this was back when before I knew much about YouTube, I was like, oh man, I, if I'm going to do reviews of these, I better have the physical copies, otherwise the I copyright that police too. Yeah. are going to come after me. I felt like you know what? That's old school uh, YouTube mentality, retro yeah. in the retro community. Like I felt that I couldn't do a series review unless I bought every single game, and it'd always be one game that was super expensive. I'm like, well, I have to talk about it for five seconds, but I need to have a game. <laughs> Where now? I'll just show some footage of it if, if need be. If I have played the game, but yeah. I don't I physically have it, nobody can own everything. That's so insane. Yeah. And especially when you review, like, oh my god, like, how can anybody own everything and try to review it? It's impossible. Like, you can't do it. Just it's, fuck it. Who cares? I know it's impossible. I still want to try it. That's like, <laughs> it's like my, my pipe dream. I will have played and reviewed every RPG. I will play them all to completion. What What is what is your plan? Are you, do you want to review every RPG that you personally like? Or like, is, there, is there a game plan? Or are you like, do you want to do every Super Nintendo RPG? Is that I what? Want, like, it, I know that this is impossible, but like in my own little monkey brain, I'm like, I want to review every JRPG ever made. Good luck. I want to, I want to, I want to play them to completion, and I want to talk about them on the channel. I know. It's never going to happen, but I'm going to, I'm going to get a long way by attempting. It's going to be a fun journey to try to figure Well, that. there's all the PC Engine JRPGs you haven't played yet. Oh my god. I know, that's I what I'm talking about. Just, I'm joking on it. Like, it's, Im <laughs> it's impossible. And when you, the amount of Japanese games that never came out over here, oh my god, there's so many. The like JRPGs, like, Japan was flooded. I, for us, we got the right amount to make us like want more, but Japan was just like overload. Yeah, they they were spoiled. Oh, they like, were. big time. Yeah, I've I've got a friend who lives in Japan right now, Jimmy Hoppa. Who yeah, just absolutely does a bunch of imports, and, and we we're talking one day, and he's like, you know, out here JRPGs are like sports games in the United States. Totally. Like they're just they litter the streets. Yeah, you're tripping over. He's them. totally talking total truth because I, I if you see in like Hard Off and all that, all this is RPGs <sighs> and extra copies of Dragon. Quest six and five <laughs> and shit, you know, they're just flooding out. Like they're like by, by the truckload. So, what would you say your favorite RPG of all time is? Oh my god, that's a big. I know. Question. I know. Is that is that an episode? <sighs> I, it's not. At least not yet. So here's here's the. Th I get this question a lot, and the thing is, my favorite RPG changes based on the day of the week. Does it really? Yeah. Some days wow. my favorite is. Breath of Fire 3. Yeah. Because it's got such an epic quest and a fun battle system and Ryu, the, uh, or Ryu. Ryu. Yeah, your main character. Yeah, there's a big, yeah. yeah. It goes from being a child to being an adult and it's such a, an emotionally driven story and it's so cool. But then other times it's like, oh, it's Earthbound or it's Grandia because yeah. of that battle system that, you know, with the, the Q at the bottom. Oh, the, yeah. You know, it's just, it could be, it could be any number of things just depending on how, what mood I'm in. Yeah. Which is, one of the reasons I always really feel, uh, I uh, I don't want to ascribe numbers and right. scores to video games when I review them. I just right. want to say, was this a good experience? Was it worth it? Uh, or is there a better way to go about getting it if it wasn't worth the money that I spent on it? Yeah. You know? um, so, yeah. It's, it's interesting for me, like... If somebody says, you know, I've said it so many fucking times on this channel, but my favorite uh, RPG is definitely Fantasy Star, purely based on nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And that is a certain period in my life when I was 14. It was like yeah. a wonderful summer, hanging out with friends in the Dungeons and Dragons basement, playing that game. Oh my God, it's life changing. But like, that's nostalgia talking. I've always said that, but mm -hmm. my God, I know there's so many RPGs like, you know, Earthbound and, <sighs> you know, you know, Fantasy Star 4 is a real goodie, too. Like, there's so many. And it's, never mind the PS1 era, Lunar, oh my, oh my god, Final Fantasy oh, 7, Sukoden, uh, yeah, if, if we want to get into action RPGs, like Parasite oh, Eve. Terra Enigma. Terra Enigma is a very classic, yeah, absolutely. 100%. European only, if goddamn, you fuck you, Europe. I know, I know. I know. Oh my god. That's a classic. That's, that's... I, I feel like that's the only one that I can consistently say is my favorite action RPG is Terranigma. Yeah, that's a good Some days, some days Dark Cloud 2, but otherwise... Terranigma. Oh, you like Dark Cloud 2 quite oh, a lot. Eh? Dark Cloud 2 was amazing. It's, it's different. Isn't it amazing that people are in different places in their lives and they play a game at a certain time and it just mm -hmm. means so much to them? Yeah. Where for me, when I played it, I was like, oh, this is pretty good. I liked it. I didn't hate it. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like, oh my God, but for you it did. And that's so amazing. Something yeah. about just like rebuilding the world. And that's a theme that both of the games have. Yeah. Is just so appealing to me. And I have no idea why. Yeah. What do you think of the Nina Kuni uh, series? You know, oh, really unpopular opinion coming. Oh, interesting. Sorry. I didn't like the first game too much. I've, I've actually not played it, but yeah. it's actually more of a slight against... I, 
I usually get flack for this when I say it. I'm not a big fan of Studio Ghibli. What? what? I know. <laughs> oh, he's saying this with me in the room. <laughs> is that for real, man? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Why is that? No, I, I, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I, this is this is the difference between typing online, where two people talk to each other about it. I'm a huge Studio Ghibli fanatic, and you're not. And I'm totally open to hearing why. It's interesting. Yeah. So. Uh, so, a phrase that I've used in the past is that, to me, Studio Ghibli feels to anime as Family Circus feels to the comic section of a newspaper. Do you think it's like too? Do you feel it's, it's a too little, Disney? A little too wholesome. A little too oh cheerful. Oh my! You've little... not watched Princess Mononoke. I've played. I watched Min Princess Mononoke. Uh, Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. I've not seen that. Um, Laputa. No. Then please, my friend, okay. go and see those movies and come back. Okay. Because I think those movies are very, they have some very mature themes about adults destroying the world and doing all that. And I, I'm with you. Some of the later Ghibli stuff is, is very kid friendly stuff, like the Ponyo or whatever. Yeah, Ponyo, not friend, no, I'm not into that. Away. Yeah, it kind of, they started to get a little bit like more of a broader market, mm -hmm. more fantasy esque. Where I think uh, Miyazaki back in the day, he was firing on all cylinders, telling really strong emotional stories. But I can see if you hadn't seen the earlier films, how you'd feel that way. Huh. So seriously, go and watch the earlier films. I think you'll be kind of blown away by it. The okay. Crimson Pig is fucking legendary. Okay. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. I trust me. I'm not somebody. I I I have a film review show, and I hate going and seeing. CG kids movies, man. I can't stand it. Oh, so I know that kind yeah. of feeling, that repulsiveness mm -hmm. towards something. But yeah, no, give it, a, give it a shot. Now, so uh, Nina Kuni uh, Two has nothing to do with Ghibli in this one at all. Yeah. So I, I haven't played those. Yeah. But uh, but I do want to, and I already said I plan to. Yeah, of course you will. Yeah. So it it will happen, but. Mm. Uh, and I guess I need to also add those other Ghibli movies to my... Oh, fuck yes. You guys see Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. You know, that was actually the inspiration for um, Crystallis. Was it really? Yeah. I, I love Crystallis. I finished that back in the day by SNK. Great yeah. action RPG. Yeah, that was a real... Not enough people have talked about that game, including myself, where you have... Oh, that was like one of my very early, early, early ones. Early. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was a really fun game. But it is. It's a post-apocalyptic sort of uh, thing where the humanity's been sent back to the to like the dark ages, basically, and so you don't notice that it's so post-apocalyptic. But then there's like things like computers at the end of the game that like, oh my god, this is like actually super far into the future. Yeah. Did you know that there was there was supposed to be a sequel to that too? No, I did not. Yeah, it was being planned for the Neo Geo. AES home system. I, I, I just remember reading about it. There was an article, yes, they're, this is what they're working on, then disappeared. Magician Lord 2 is also coming out as well. That was another Neo Geo action. That was an action game, though. But there was supposed to be a Crystallis action RPG for the home console. Wouldn't that be oh, fucking amazing? That would have been I know. so good. Now, nothing ever happened with that. that that's lost in time and legend now Man. type of thing. But oh, it's kind of funny you mentioned Crystallis because not a lot of people... Remember that game, and for me, and my friend Andrew, we loved that game. We yeah. were like, "Whoa, the music is so good too!" It's right? So good. It's I so have, good. I already have the song stuck in my oh, head. Oh, me too. I, I, do you know what? I'm so old that I used to uh, put my stereo up to it and tape the music from the game onto tape. I did and that. I play it. Yeah, I did that too. Oh, good. I'm, so my, you're you're old enough to have done that as well. My 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 friend lent to me this game. It wasn't an RPG. This was before this. Before I got into RPGs, he lent to me. Uh, one of the WWF games, and I used to record yeah. the intro songs that would play oh, wow. for like Shawn Michaels and for <laughs> Diesel. And the You're a hardcore wrestling fan too. I, I, I love wrestling. Uh, I, I used to be. Me used but, to be. Re Re uh, Attitude Era for me. Yeah, it's been a long while. Yeah. I kind of gave up after uh, after Stone Cold Steve Austin left. I was like, I know. Ah, I'm done. I know. That was a certain era, and that's the era I was into. But you used to record the music on the tape? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's good. So I could have the, the Heartbreak Kids uh, music playing when I was on my way to school. That my Walkman. Do you know how embarrassed I was? I was at school, and I had all this video game music taped t taped on a tape. Yeah. And, and I had my headphones, and I thought, if somebody grabbed my headphones and was listening, I said, what are you li listening to? Because you get judged in your music you listen to in high school, right? Just say techno. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's hentai music, though. What? <laughs> you know? But uh, to, to be honest, I remember sitting in uh, in my, uh, what was it, uh, art class, and I was listening to Japanese uh, music from anime shows that I taped off my beta player. I'm, I'm so old, I had beta. 
And I remember listening to it and I thought, oh my God. I remember thinking like, you know, if any girl heard me listening to this, they'd think I'm a fucking loser. Because Japanese animation was not known about, and like, what's that, 89? Yeah. When I was doing that. So video games and all that hadn't always been cool. Mm -hmm. Hasn't always been a cool thing. We were having lunch. I always tell this story. And some the, the waitress came up and she got her order. And she's like, oh, what are you guys doing for there? We're all shooting videos and all this. And, and you said something like, yeah, just a couple of nerdy guys doing that. I said, you talk for yourself. Remember we said we, we, said we were going to talk about that? Yeah. Because I've never looked at video games and movies and all that as, as a nerdy hobby. That was something that a certain sect of people in high schools would say to you. Yeah. Like, even though they were secretly playing video games as well. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh yeah, you fucking, you're into Transformers, you're a nerd, you're this. And I never thought that being into video games or anything was nerdy or... or but it was looked down upon, yeah. but didn't mean it was what it was. It doesn't mean it was nerdy. Yeah, in the way I said it, like... No, know, I, I it's... think it's fun. I know, I said, <laughs> we had a debate after this, about this, it was good. Yeah, so... I... You know, when I was growing up in high school, being a nerd, being a geek was no longer necessarily like, you know, Revenge of the Nerds, like, you know, oh. parodies of, like, it wasn't something that was demeaning, at least not when you were saying it amongst your friends, like, oh, you're such a nerd, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of course you, you know. do that. That's so amazing, like, for our generation, I remember it was almost like a secret society. I was in high school, I was in grade eight. And I found other people that watched G.I. Joe, the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And they were in the high school, down a certain, you know, little section of the, the library. And I went in, and I'm like, hey, you guys watch G.I. Joe as well? They're like, yeah? And they're all, like, nervous. <laughs> I'm like, I said, so do I. You know, I'm the same way I was now. I'm like, let's talk about G.I. Joe, the animated movie, guys. It's amazing. Um, but I always was like, who cares? And I, I was always a part of different groups and stuff like that. But, boy, there was some people that were made to feel very bad about the hobby. You know, I know I've yeah. mentioned, you know, Rob has been on the show many, many times and talked about how he was bullied, you know, for being into this kind of stuff, which is so ridiculous. Yeah. So, I don't know if it's like that now. Do you think, I think it's a lot more socially acceptable to like video games and movies than... I think so. I think so. But I think that there's no end... Uh, I, I don't to think being people be... being assholes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, God, even even not in high school i still sometimes people attempt to bully me in my youtube comments and i think that that's just really weird <laughs> like, i i'm not really i read the youtube comments but if somebody leaves me a real nasty one or something i just kind of go that's it i mean i've been on youtube for 10 years it's like this is all you got i know i'd be i've been doing it like I, it doesn't even phase me man yeah the stuff you say me. is it's got nothing on my own inner critic yeah yeah it's, it's, it's nothing but i you, you can't even if, like yeah i nothing like that but you know i'll read the comments and it's only if somebody's just saying oh, you're an asshole it's like, okay well why am i an asshole shit face yeah you know tell me like give me a, give me a reason why yeah, like let's have a discussion about yeah it. yeah uh, maybe maybe and, less of an and asshole, that's why so. this is I wish we could all, I wish the YouTube comments could be like me and you talking right now. Yeah. That would be amazing, because that's how I am. I know you are as a person. I like face-to-face. -face. I like talking about things. Like, look at that. We disagreed on something. You didn't like, like the Studio Ghibli movies. And I'm still on the show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Afterwards, you know, this is like, you know, I'm pulling out the rubber bat. But, <laughs> but, but no, it's, it's really, really, people should be able to hash things out like that. I find in, in our community, a lot, there's a lot of arguments. People arguing about video mm. games. And it's like, when did this, like, when I was in high school, it was, you felt so glad just to talk to people about video games. It was such a niche hobby. Yeah. Where now it's like, Everybody's in these clicks, like, oh, no, you're into the E series, and you don't like yeah. the, this series, and it's like, ah. That's sort of elitism. Elitism, like, yeah, but that happens in any hobby, I think, too. I think you're right, yeah. You know, like, like for, like, people who into Games of Thrones, they'll be like, what, you haven't read the, this third book? How dare you? And, you know, typing in people, because you're like, this is one sect of, of the world. There's yeah. many sects. Uh, you know, like many different kinds of uh, forums out there for people to talk in and, you know, book clubs and, oh my God, it's crazy. Mountain climbing clubs. And I just think, I think that happens with everything. But Yeah, a lot of know. gatekeeping too. A lot of people yeah. are like, oh, you haven't played this game? How can you be an RPG fan if you haven't played this really obscure game? I don't believe you. And you know what you is know? wonderful is that about your channel is it is about playing the games and experience them. It's like nobody, in it, myself and yourself, we don't know everything about fucking RPGs in the world. No. By any street, we just talk about what we like and what we played in our experiences. That's all we can do. Yeah. And um, a lot of the fun is playing brand new games and going, oh, wow, like the Yakuza series. I, oh. I, I'm a Yakuza noob mm -hmm. in the grand spectrum of people who have played all the series, like Alpha Mega Sin stuff. And I'm just having a lot of fun experiencing it. And it's wonderful. And it's like, 
it's it is fun, you know, like. It's yeah. fun to discover new things and play new games. As someone who really enjoyed Shenmue, I've been told, oh, you've definitely got to play the Yakuza series. Yeah. Because it's uh, apparently a very similar style of game. But yes. With, like, a lot more humor to it. It's way. really strange how they didn't make more Shenmue games, but they made more Yakuza games. It's really... But Yakuza is a... Well, not yet. We're in a different world, thank God. I'm, I'm not talking like John from three years ago, yeah. when we had no Shenmue 3 and no Shenmue 1 and 2 coming out. Yeah. What a world we live in now. We're, we're spoiled. Uh, we actually, honestly, as video gamers now, I think we're spoiled. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, we can pick and choose what we want, and there's so much variety. And the games that you don't like, the DLC things and things you say, this is shit, you don't buy, you don't support. Look yeah. what happened to Battlefront, too. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if you make a, a voice with, you know, out there... It, can change things yeah for sure god that's changed so much we can actually we can talk back to the creators of these oh of these studios they're this far and, away oh man it's not like when the in the 80s like i remember playing games in the 80s like it's funny when i met koji garashi you could uh, castlevania symphony of the night mm -hmm. i'm back with when i was playing symphony of the night like japanese creators seemed like they were in the, in the sky and the gods and yeah. somebody you'd never even be able to brush shoulders with or oh, yeah. even see in a room they so, were in the magical land of Japan. Yeah, the magical <laughs> land of Japan. And so for me to meet him, I was like, wow, things have changed. The world has gotten a lot smaller with the internet and social media mm -hmm. the way it is. So I think I think things have gotten better that way and all of that. So do you have any future series that you want to cover on your channel? Is there any big things you want to do? Oh, everyone. <laughs> Every single You, you got to keep it. Yeah, yeah you, you got, you're very I, ambitious, I man. Gotta, I love it. I got to narrow it in. Um... Like, the Golden Sun series is one that I've definitely got on my radar. I've been getting a lot of requests for that. That's a great um, series. I just finished uh, Xeno Gears, and I need to get into uh, Xeno Saga. Oh, boy. And and you know, then, I've always avoided doing Xeno Saga, man. It's so big. Yeah. And the first game alone is, I swear to God, it's 70% 70 cin 70 cinema, 30% game. I like the game. I love the game, in fact. But my God. I can't wait to watch your review. <laughs> and, and then Xenoblade. <laughs> Just, that's going to happen. This is the next 10 years of your life, man. <laughs> like, you're going to be like, shit. I've got some catching up to do. Yeah. I, I didn't start playing RPGs until I was like 12 or so. So, got a, got a lot that came out. It's hard to do a dedicated RPG channel because RPGs take so much time to do. Mm -hmm. I found now that I had to do, with Kim, even for Nino Kuni 2, we had to do a first thoughts and final thoughts because... I was like, okay, I want to talk about yeah. the game, but you fuck, it was 70 hours before we could talk about the end. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking crazy, yeah. I, I like, to be honest, I like shorter RPGs. Things about 30, 40 hours are nice for me. You know, you'd be surprised perfect. how short some of the older RPGs actually I know. are. Uh, like, I've got this stream coming up where I'm going to play all of Earthbound just in one sitting. And uh, when I do that, like, I was like, man, can I do that? And then I look it up. It's like, it's, a, it's like a 27 hour game. It's possible. Yeah, you could you could do that in one sitting. My, I'm gonna come in after your twentieth hour to see how you're doing. <laughs> I'll be there with my coffee. Like, how's Derek doing? I just, just woke up. Playing with one bloodshot eye. Oh, and... you're gonna be after a while. Oh yeah. If you're, <laughs> if I ain't gonna hear that combat music anymore. Yeah, I know the. I can even hear the combat music. I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh man, that. That'd be the, the fun, Johnny though. B. Good soundtrack or the 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 cover. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. Oh, you... with the fret with. Uh, who was that? Frankie? Man. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of fun sitting there for... I can't... I, I'm, to be honest, that'll be a lot of fun, won't it? It will. Because I've the problem with reviewing all these RPGs is that that's all I have time to play anymore. So yeah. I reviewed Earthbound five years ago. I haven't had a chance to play it since. Yeah. Uh, so this is like an opportunity for me to just go back in one day. And not dedicate like a month to playing Earthbound for a review. You know, I I have not finished Earthbound. I finished it when I was 21 years old, which now is 23 years ago. Whew, isn't that amazing? God, it's amazing. Nice. I'll never forget that summer when I finished it. And was like, it was like wow. And I sat there, got all emotional at the ending. Won't ruin all that. I was just like, what a game. Yeah. What a game. And I cried. Yeah. Oh, I there was so much emotion. Yeah. Like. There's so much emotion with that game anyway. For anybody who was there at the time, or even you played it out, or it's a special game, and people are like, oh, it's overhyped and all that. And I agree. Yeah. Over the years, it's got this mythical thing that some people play it, and they're like, oh, this isn't that good. It's it's, it's not it's not a three hundred dollar game. It's not. It was a thousand dollar plus game now, isn't it? Like to get uh, if you want box, box. box. Yeah. yeah, which is crazy. So, yeah, but um, yeah, no, like one of the plans me and Kim have is 
she's never played Earthbound. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about doing like a live stream where Kim plays it for the very first time. I'll wear my Nest cap and shirt and we'll just get going and, and do it and, and see how she likes it. I wonder, she's like, I, don't, she, I think she's to be played at times before to capture footage and she's like, Oh, this looks kind of interesting, so we'll, we'll see. Has she played any Dragon Quest before? Uh, well, she played, I guess you don't. Oh, that's right, that's right. Kim, she played seven Kim, and... She, Kim has finished, okay, let's see. She started with nine, I got her addicted to nine, yeah. we both finished nine together. Yeah. And then she went back, she did four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, not in that order. Uh, Swords on the Wii. Oh, wow. Did that, and wow. then, what else? I'm thinking it's... Do, 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 do. I, she's t talked about going back and playing one and two and three, but you know, we'll find the time of the console. We don't really know how she wants to go about that yet. But yes, and then I think the plan is for her to do 11, and I'm going to do 11 with her, yeah, pretty much. So if she likes those, and obviously she does, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a, then I, she, she's going to love it. Oh, she's, she's, a hard, she's fucking nuts, man. She finished Persona, the new Persona. She finished um, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy XII. Oh. Kim is... Kim! is fucking hardcore, man. <laughs> Kim, do you know it was so funny? I remember she was on the channel a while ago. She finished Nina Kuni too. Yeah. Just a couple weeks, three weeks ago or something like that. Um, somebody said, yeah, I don't, you know, don't bring Kim on the channel. She's not hardcore. I'm like, what, what are you talking, what makes a person hardcore? Right? What does she have to fucking do? <laughs> I mean, like, what do you fucking have to do? It's so insane. Oh, you had to finish, you know, Fantasy Star 1 to 4. And yep. Get the fuck, what are you talking about? <laughs> get out of here. You know, it's so ridiculous. So many people, mainline SMT or, or not. Oh, or, God. Or you're, you're nothing. <laughs> yeah, you're, no, you're nothing. You're nothing. <laughs> people are crazy. People are crazy. This is supposed to be about fun. Yeah. When did it stop being about fun? I don't play games because it's, um, I don't know, like... Like like a, a thing I need to study, like a like a machine, like I, oh I you know like an encyclopedia. This is a, these are this is supposed to be fun. Yeah. Every game I've ever played is fun. Rogue Galaxy, it's fucking oh, fun. Yeah, I know. Level five, I just love level five. They're great. Yeah. <sighs> And like Rogue Galaxy, when I first played that, I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. It's Dark Cloud 2 with Space Pirates. With way too much combat. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say that. A little that. too much combat. Yeah. Well, that, that's in a lot of RPGs. Right? You're just like, okay, he's toned down the combat a little bit. <laughs> Great. You know? They've gotten really good over the last bunch of years, last five, six years of getting the combat just kind of perfect. Like, yeah. where you can kind of pick if you want to do it or not. If you don't, well, it's up to you. When you get, you know, going to a boss later on, you get shredded. Oh, yeah. Like, was it Bravely Default where you could change your... Oh, fuck. The, the Kim finish that as well. And, yeah. God. I, I haven't played it. It's oh, she, on my list. That drove Kim crazy the ending because you have to keep doing the ending over and over and over again. I'm not saying anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, she, she went fucking apeshit. She was losing <laughs> her brain over that type of thing. What do you th what could you say? I know you had a hard time with saying your favorite R RPG, per se, but what would you say your favorite series is? Could you say, like, would it be Final Fantasy? Mm. Was it Dragon Quest? Is it, you know, SMT? Like, you know, like, like what would it be? So far, it's... Oh, it's hard, but so far... Oh, wait, wait. I, I could cheat. Cheat. Soul Blazer series. It's not That's actually a, a series. One. Oh, dude. It's not actually a series, but Soul Blazer, Illusion of Gaia, Terra Enigma. Yeah. And then if you want, you can include a Grandstream Saga on that as well. Right. Absolutely. But, oh my god, that's... It's... Oh. It's, a, it's a series the same way that, like, the Xeno franchises are. It, it is... Soul Blazer is unbelievable. Yeah. It is unbelievable. My parents went to Reno when I was like 19 years old mm -hmm. and I was smoking a thousand cigarettes a minute waiting for them to come back because I knew they picked me up that game. And I came back and I finished it in a day. Whoa. I finished it that night. I <laughs> sat and was played all night, finished it with the girlfriend I was with at the time. I love that. That Now that music, eh? Oh my God, isn't that music incredible? Yeah, that's... <sighs> yeah. I know. That's a, that's a good... I, hear I, I like I like I like it that you picked that series, actually. It's not... The stereotypical, oh, it's Final Fantasy or something like yeah. that, you know? Well, it's every game in that series, except for maybe Grandstream Saga, is in its own right a, perf a perfect version of that game. Right. Like, I love how those specific games all have, like, this really kind of dark side to them that it's usually lighthearted, but then there's something that'll happen that just, like, twists the... It'll, it'll stab you and twist the knife. Yeah. Know? And... And 
Soul Blazer has that when like you, there's this scene where you come into this, uh, you can see the memories of some like creature that, uh, oh, I can't, it was like maybe a plant or something. And in a previous life, it was like a, a father and son who were stranded on a boat and they were like starving to death. Yeah. It just like really got really somber. There. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the old games had a really, some real emotional edges to them. Like Steve Coden and all those games. They had these little moments when they just kind of nick you or there's some yeah. hardcore emotion. You know, Where did this come from in my RPG? Yeah. And that's what made us what loved RPGs. That's what made us love these games was the some of the emotion that it can take you on, yeah. right? It, Absolutely. It's a wild ride. It is. And there's so many RPGs. You know, what, what would you say to somebody? Somebody said, Super Derek, Super Derek, where should I start playing RPGs? What's the first game I should play? Well, what I usually say is, uh, that depends on what do you like. Because there's an RPG for everyone. There really is, isn't there? Yeah, because like... If you like sci-fi or medieval or modern day settings. Yeah, if you... God, it's it's everywhere. But if if you don't want to start with just that, because that could be anything for anybody, I think that a really good entry level per, uh, uh, RPG right now, uh, if you've got a modern console, I really like Persona Five, and oh, that would be a good. really good entry point. Uh, That's a really good entry. That is a very good entry point. Yeah. And there's also older games that were designed to be entry points, like Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, which a lot of people don't like it, but it it's actually good for it's fun. an entry point. As and well, I was I was a hardcore RPG fanatic, and I bought that just because I'm like, oh my god, any part of yeah. RPG, and I was like, man, this is really a lot simple. But I'm like. Fuck it, it's an RPG I'm playing, I'm having fun. And the music care. is awesome, right? The music is legendary. Yeah. I have it on CD. Yeah, the music is so, so good. But anyways, we've been talking for a very long time. We, we could talk for another 36 minutes, easily. But um, I just want to say, like, you know, thank you so much for coming on the channel. I really, really do appreciate it. And for everyone out there, please go and subscribe to Derek's channel. Absolutely. If you want to see some hardcore, in-depth reviews about RPGs, you cannot go any further than the link below, down below. Go and just subscribe and make, make his day. Absolutely. So, anyways, guys, until next time.